Hi. Greetings. On page 60 of Crisis of Conscience, in this chapter, Governing Body, uh, we've got to the, the end of the section about Rutherford and how fickle he was theologically when he throws out Russell after insisting for about a decade that Russell was the faithful and wise servant. And, and then casting aspersions. No, I would go further and say slandering everybody who dares disagree with his judgment. Mm -hmm. When Judge Rutherford died on January 8, 1942, Nathan H. Knorr was unanimously elected president by the board of directors. The organizational structure continued basically the same, though with some adjustments, as Knorr did field out some responsibility. Circumstances actually made this a necessity for the number of witnesses grew from only 108,000 at the time of Rutherford's death to more than 2 million during Knorr's presidency. Not a writer, nor particularly a student of scripture, Knorr relied on Fred Franz, the vice president, as more or less the final arbiter on scriptural matters and the principal writer of the organization. Questions such as those discussed at governing body sessions related earlier in this chapter, were, for decades, submitted to Fred Franz for decision. If mm. President Knorr felt that the decision might have some critical effect on the society's operation in certain countries of the world, he would usually discuss it personally with Fred Franz and would not hesitate to make known what he felt the circumstances made advisable in a pragmatic way, overruling the Vice President if necessary. As has been noted earlier, this basic relationship continued up into the 1970s, as illustrated in the decision to return to having bodies of elders in the congregations. That particular decision hinged largely upon the view and opinion of one person, the vice president, and when he changed his mind and favored the return to bodies of elders, the president acceded. Mm. The same was basically the case with all published material. The President selected the main articles for the Watchtower from material submitted by various writers, and he then passed these on to the writer depart writing department for proofreading and any necessary editing or polishing. Then these words were finally read by the Vice President and the President, and if approved, were published. Carl Adams, who was in charge of the writing department when I entered it in 1965, explained to me that the president by then had given the department considerable latitude as to the reworking of such material. He pointed out that the one exception, namely any material written by the vice president, stating that what comes from Brother France is viewed as ready for publication, with no adjustment to be made. Here again, nonetheless, the president could overrule. As an example, in 1967, President Knorr sent to Carl Adams, Ed Dunlap, and myself copies of the questions from the readers that Fred France had prepared and turned in for publication. Just a year before, a book had been published, authored by Fred France, in which it was pointed out that the year 1975 would mark the end of 6,000 years of human history. Likening those 6,000 years to six days of a thousand years each, he had written. And here's a direct quote from that book, which of course is the Life Everlasting and Freedom of the Sons of God book. This is pages 29 and 30. Mm -hmm. Quote, So in not many years, within our own generation, we are reaching what Jehovah God could view as the seventh day of man's existence. How appropriate it would be for Jehovah God to make of this coming seventh period of a thousand years a Sabbath period of rest and release, a great jubilee Sabbath for the proclaiming of liberty throughout the earth to all its inhabitants. This would be most timely for mankind. It would also be most fitting on God's part. For remember, mankind has yet ahead of it what the last book of the Holy Bible speaks of as the reign of Jesus Christ over earth for a thousand years, the millennial reign of Christ. 
prophetically, Jesus Christ, when on earth 19 centuries ago, said concerning himself, For Lord of the Sabbath is what the Son of Man is. That's Matthew 12, 8. It would not be by mere chance or accident, but would be according to the loving purpose of Jehovah God for the reign of Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, to run parallel with the seventh millennium of man's existence. Mm. What year is that again? 66. Mm -hmm. So I remember seeing that only after 1975, it being shown to myself and my parents uh, when we, w my dad made the claim that they hadn't, I think hadn't it said was it my in dad, print? that they hadn't s mm. claimed 1975. Uh, and, and I remember the brother mentioning the book, and we went and looked at it and read it. Ooh. Uh, so it's a lot more clear than than we had remembered, or certainly my parents. I didn't remember it at all, but I was a little guy. Little I think kid. we would conclude reading it now, or mm -hmm. even then. That's more than a hint. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's, no, it's very direct. That's timely on God's part to do that, right? Yeah, and fitting the wording. Mm -hmm. Okay, he continues, uh, that is uh, Ray here. Not for many decades had there been such a sense of excitement among Jehovah's Witnesses as these statements generated. A tremendous surge of expectation developed, far surpassing the feeling of the end's nearness that I and the others had experienced in the early 1940s. That is why we were amazed to see the question from the readers. Uh, Fred Franz had worked up, now argued that the end of 6,000 years would actually come one year earlier than, th than had been published in the new book namely that it would come in 1974 instead of 1975. As Nor told Carl Adams when he received this material, he went to Fred Franz and asked, why the sudden change? Fred replied with definiteness th that this is the way it is. It's 1974. <laughs> I can almost hear him. <laughs> that was Fred, yes. Yeah. Nor did not feel at ease with the change, and that is why he sent the three copies, the three of us copies, with his request that we submit our individual observations. The vice president's argumentation was built almost entirely upon the use of a cardinal and an ordinal number in the account of the flood of Genesis, at Genesis chapter 7 verses 6 and 11 meaning the whole number 600 or the 600th that's the the difference right yeah that's what he has in brackets yeah. 600 yeah. years and the 600th year the argument endeavored to show that the count of time set out in the new book was off one year as the time of the flood and that one more year needed to be added with the result that the end of 6,000 years would come up one year earlier, in 1974 instead of 1975. Each of the three of us respectfully wrote that we did not think the material should be published and that it would have an extremely unsettling effect on the brothers. The president evidently agreed, since the material prepared by the vice president was never published, and this was quite a rare okay occurrence. So you can see this is one man yeah, he's coming deciding. up with this theory, and, and it all hinges on a single detail in the book of Genesis about the year of the flood being the 600th year of Noah's life. Mm -hmm. And the, the lives of many people are hanging on the judgment of Fred Franz at this point. Yeah. So at least Nathan Dorr had a practical consideration. He didn't know the textual stuff. He hadn't yeah. studied it personally, but he thought this would be, uh, would create unease. And I think it would have. Yeah. If, if, if they're, they're doubling down on a date, as they did later, mm -hmm. about it being months, w months, not years. That's what Fred Franz later says. But yes. at this point, he's willing to go 74. 
uh, again, one man. Yeah. One that, man. That's what I think to me was the big shocker reading this book and realizing that things are being prepared not the way I thought they were being prepared as a witness. By prayerful men gathering yeah, together. Yeah, gathering together, studying the Bible and and yeah. finding out what all the, the the remnant out there, all the the uh, anointed were were deciding and thinking about. No, mm -hmm. it's one guy is 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 deciding. Yeah. This is it even this is not even found in most cults. Most cults do it far more committee than the watchtower does at the teaching level. Mm -hmm. So the illusion of the governing body is what he's dealing with here, namely that yeah. the there governing body governing aren't body. even being as consulted up until this time anyway. The board of directors, as we'll see in the next episode, the, yeah, is the, the they're not being consulted about publications. Usually Nathan Knorr is not troubling himself with this. Franz is given all of it. Yeah. Uh, there's a writing committee for some of the articles, but they have to pass through Fred Franz and then through Nathan Knorr. So yeah. it's Knorr and Franz. They're expected just to rubber stamp whatever the president says. Whatever the vice president says most of the time, uh, right? Yeah. But he's case, Nathan's yeah. not doing the writing, yeah. so he's just the final, the final judge, right? Yeah, you almost think of him as being the president at that point. Yeah. Yeah. The link that we've chosen is to Dwayne Magnani, who is give, throwing up before us a, a relatively unknown fact. We all know about 1914, 1925 scandal. We know about 1975 scandal. The one we are less familiar with is 1999. So the video we're putting on your screen is Dwayne mm. McNanny talking about this and how the Watchtower got away with a fast one there. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Mm -hmm.